Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV here, back with another Market Watch episode. Today we are continuing on with our post ban list market coverage, as we have seen a ton of cards fluctuating in price over the last couple of days. The ban list always changes a ton of different things, and with decks like Cash Tira and Super Heavy Samurais all taking a pretty big step back, there is a ton of room for new decks to step in and take over the format. When we combine that with all of the new cards we have coming out between Battles of Legend, Wild Survivors, and Duelist Nexus, we are sure to see some crazy things happen, and we're going to review some of those early, crazy price jumps in today's episode. Let's get started. The first card we're looking at is Lady Labyrinth of the Silver Castle. Over the last format or two, Labyrinth has proven itself to be pretty strong. As a trap deck, they're naturally a bit slower than a lot of other strategies, but they still proved to be a strong deck that could actually top large events fairly consistently. Now on the ban list, Labyrinth actually went completely untouched, while threats to Labyrinth such as Arise Heart and Lightning Storm were actually hit. Because of this, I think Labyrinth are definitely one of the big winners from the list, and so a lot of players are expecting Labyrinth to be a top tier strategy moving forward. Lady Labyrinth is of course one of the best cards for the deck, being a free special summon if a normal trap card or a Labyrinth card was activated this turn, and it's also able to set almost any normal trap card directly out of the deck. Now so far we haven't seen too much crazy price fluctuation with the Labyrinth cards, we're expecting everything to be reprinted in the 2023 Megatons, which will include both Tactical Masters and Darkwing Blast, so the Labyrinth stuff should be much more affordable in just a few months. However, some players will want to run Labyrinth at Nationals or other big events that will happen before the Megatons come out, so they need to go and pick up the cards, and Lady Labyrinth saw the biggest price jump out of all the different Labyrinth support cards. It's one of the few 3-ofs for the strategy, while Welcome Labyrinth, which is one of the other 3-ofs, is confirmed to be included in Battles of Legend. This card was actually quite affordable just a couple of weeks ago, down at around $15 per copy, but now has suddenly jumped up to between $35 and $40 each. I think that players didn't expect so many of the other decks this format to get hit on this list, so Labyrinth actually came out of it looking much stronger than people were expecting it to, so it was a big rush to go out and pick up the key cards. Naturally this card's price and what you do with it depends on what decks you want to play this upcoming format. If you're not planning on running Labyrinth, you may want to sell this card off now before we get too close to that Megaton reprint, which will almost certainly drive the card's price down. The next card here is a really cool one, it is Chiwen Light of the Yang Zing. So Yang Zings are a really old archetype from back in the Duelist Alliance days. I remember wanting to play them and they were kind of fun, they were just a bit too slow and all of the mistiming which was really annoying. For the most part you guys probably just know the synchros, right? Baxia, Yazi, and Chaofeng, specifically if you were ever playing with or against Sword Soul. The unbanning of Denglong was actually a really big boost for certain strategies, and Chiwen happens to be a card that Denglong has synergy with. Chiwen is a level 1 tuner that you can send to the graveyard with the effect of Denglong, and when a Yangzing monster that you control is destroyed while Chiwen is in your graveyard, you can special summon Chiwen back to the field. This is part of a couple of different combos that you can do with Baxia, and I've seen Sword Soul combos where you can actually build some pretty interesting boards. Unfortunately, Chiwen does only have two printings, the original from Duelist Alliance, and then its Megaton reprint from that year as well. Both printings are ultra rare, and either one is going to cost you about $20 right now. Not too bad since this card is just a one of, but it's a one of that might not be that strong, it kind of depends on if Sword Soul can make its way back into the format to compete with everything else. With Denglong reprinted, I think that there's a chance we will see some of the Yang Zing cards all reprinted in Battles of Legend, if not I could definitely see Chi Wen and Denglong being reprinted in something like an OTS tournament pack. That being said, Chiwen is just a one of that's getting hype because of the unbanning of Denglong, so if you have some extra copies that are sitting around in your bulk, you might just want to offload them now while the card is so hyped up. On to the next one, it is Cyframe Gear Delta. So of course we just saw Gamma go to one, which was both expected and unexpected. On one hand the card was really strong and looked like it was going to see play in absolutely everything this format, and it did actually get hit in the OCG, but on the other hand it felt like a necessary answer to cards like Droll and Lockbird and Dimension Shifter. Now of course people still want to play Gamma just to hope to draw the one of, but it feels bad to just play one Gamma and one Driver, because then you're just as likely to draw the brick as you are the actual hand trap. Because of this, some players have turned to running two copies of Cyframe Gear Delta to replace the two Gammas. 
Delta is effectively the same thing as Gamma, but for spells instead of monster effects, so it's actually quite useful in several different matchups. Now, I don't know exactly if this is worth running, I guess it's mostly going to depend on what the best decks of the upcoming format are. I could see it being useful to hit like a Pot of Prosperity or maybe a certain field spell, but it definitely feels a bit too early to tell. However, since Delta is also a level 2 monster, this means that if you resolve Delta during your own turn, you can go into Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon and still have access to Baron. With Delta, this card had just one rare printing back in High Speed Riders, which came out about 8 years ago. Because of this, Delta is now actually a whole $9 per copy, which is quite a bit for just a rare from an old side set. Personally, I am assuming that Delta will be reprinted in Battles of Legend, if not, I think it will get a hollow upgrade in an OTS tournament pack, and for me I'm not really that crazy about Delta. One of my friends actually tried playing this in the past with 3 Gamma and 3 Delta as well just so that the drivers wouldn't feel as bricky. It was really underwhelming, and even now I feel like I'd rather just play other hand traps. But how good this card will be this upcoming format will depend on what the best decks of the format are, so keep an eye on the format and keep an eye on this card specifically, and this card's price over the next several weeks. Hey guys, before we go on, I want to remind everyone to hop over and check out mstmerch.com. That's where you can find our MST TV exclusive sleeves to rock at your next event. Aside from that, make sure that you guys check out our brand new Altsy Ego sleeves, which were designed by Tombox himself. I don't know about you guys, but I think these sleeves are absolutely insane. The whole Shadow Realm sort of effect is really cool, and the purples really pop out of the sleeve. These sleeves look even more amazing in person, and they will definitely make your friends jealous. Aside from that, we have two different cloth playmats up with really simple classic designs for when you're playing with your friends. Our black and white sleeves are up there as well with those being really smooth and perfect for sleeving up your favorite decks regardless of what format you're playing. There's also NFT sleeves for stuff in your binder that is not for trade, and dividers to help you sort out your entire collection. So regardless of if you're a competitive player or just a casual collector, you're sure to find something just for you at mstmerch.com. The next card we have is Summon Limit, a floodgate that actually was quite popular a couple of formats ago. This card prevents both players from summoning more than twice per turn, so really restricting what certain decks are able to do. Now theoretically this card is a great floodgate against a lot of different modern decks, since so many decks require you to summon multiple times in order to perform combos. I think that the exception to this would be the trap decks like Eldritch and Labyrinth, which can still play and execute their own strategies while under Summon Limit. I feel like this card is just so generically useful against things that it's a card players are going to turn to at the beginning of every format when we aren't sure exactly what the best decks of the format are because it's so generically good in today's game, but then it might fall off in favor of other floodgates as the format evolves. For instance, last format, Labyrinth chose to run Skill Drain and Gozen Match typically since they were more impactful and useful against the meta than Summon Limit was, even though Summon Limit theoretically had more applications across various matchups. I think that the one big thing that made Summon Limit ineffective last format though was Kashtira Fenrir, who could simply declare an attack and then banish a face-up Summon Limit. I know that Fenrir is still at 3, and a lot of decks might now be looking to splash Fenrir into the main or side decks as a free body, but Kashtiro being nerfed as much as it was certainly leaves more opportunities for Summon Limit to remain face up on the field. Now in terms of price, the notable jump in price was the price of the ultra rare from Battles of Legend Heroes Revenge, which went from down being at $5 to now being $9 per copy. The card has reasonably affordable alternatives, with the common from Light of Destruction and the rare from Maximum Gold Eldorado, though those printings are now moving towards a dollar each. If you don't have any copies of this card at all, I would certainly recommend that you pick up at least a set of one of the lower rarity printings of this card so that you have the option to play it if you need to. Up next is a card that I feel like we haven't really talked about in a long time, it's Bestial Magnemut. So obviously this card isn't seeing nearly as much play as it did back in Ishizu Tierleman format. This card was literally a $25 super rare at its peak because it seemed that everyone needed to play 3 copies of it to try and stop the tier limits. With all the hits to the tier limit cards, the Bestial cards were no longer stuff that everyone needed to max out on so the prices fell off quite a bit. Now, however, I think that Bestial Magnemut is once again a solid card that players should consider. There are a lot of solid decks that Bestials can have varying degrees of effectiveness against, between Gold Pride Punk, Sword Soul, Dark World, Chaos Synchrons, Math Mech, Drytron, Labyrinth, and Sky Strikers. The main thing is that Kashtira's 
probably won't be seeing very much play this upcoming format with the hits they took, and the Bestials were absolutely horrible in the Cash Tira matchup. The other thing to note is that Dragon Link might actually be a very strong contender going into next format. Magnemut is actually just an extender that can search for any dragon card in the game, and that's a lot of utility that dragons kind of lost ever since LP got banned. Now at one point, Magnemut was down at around $8 each, but it has been on a steady incline over the last few weeks. It popped up back in the format when people started to be fearful of Mathmech because of what the deck was doing over in the OCG, and even though Mathmech did get hit, I still think that there's a pretty strong case to be made for Magnemut to see play once again. Obviously, I don't think it's ever going to go back to $25 each. The card should be reprinted in the 2023 Megatins, so with it not being a staple side deck card anymore, combined with its upcoming reprint, its price should be relatively tame. However, I think that if you can grab them for around $8 in cash or $10 in trade, that's not a bad price point to pick up Magnemuts at for now, since there will probably be players looking to scoop some up for this upcoming format. So this one is a card that is actually trending downwards, but I think is actually a really good pickup right now. It's Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. This is a card that always seems to pop up in formats that have really dominant decks that build up cards or boards that are really difficult to deal with. Now over in the OCG, it seems that people are turning to Ghost Reaper as a way to get rid of Kash Tira Shangri Era, X Pearly Noir, or Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow, key extra deck monsters for three of the best decks of the format. Of course, here in the TCG, we don't have quite the same choices, Kash Tira just got hit, and Scarecrow just got banned, and so we have yet to see what exactly the best decks of the format are going to be. Ghost Reaper is always a difficult card to get a read on. I feel like we always talk about it every now and then. As a card that could be really strong, I think people talked about using it to hit Kit Kalos back in Tier Limits format, but it never really came up, and it always seemed talked about, but it never really got to see much competitive success. However, at the same time, the card just feels grossly undervalued. The Ultimate Rare copies were at $35 just a couple of weeks ago, they've already dropped down to around $25 just recently. Obviously, with a format where we don't know what's going to be good, it might just be the case that Ghost Reaper just isn't that useful, right? However, I would argue that you guys should want to pick up Ghost Reapers while they aren't useful or while they aren't in the format since they always seem to just rotate in and out, and it seems like almost a given that Ghost Reaper will eventually be useful or at least talked about once again in the future, which should drive the price back up eventually. The card does have a lot of budget printings, so you should at least own a set of the card, but oddly enough here we are actually talking about grabbing the higher rarity printings because of how seemingly undervalued they are. Even the secret rares from Shining Victories are still only $3-5 to $5 each, depending on if you want first ed or unlimiteds, they might be worth taking a look at and picking up as well. And finally, there's one last card for us to take a look at, and that is Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon. This card is a card that has gotten a lot of attention over the last couple of months as the best new card to come out of Maze of Memories. This is a generic level 8 synchro monster that lets you summon back a level 2 tuner from your graveyard, granting you access to Baron de Fleur. Now, one of the main selling points of this card is that you could summon it with Gamma and Driver. It seemed like most decks were running Gamma to stop Droll and Dimension Shifter, and using those cards to go into Baron after already getting to negate that opponent's card was a really amazing value. However, with Gamma now being limited to 1, and Delta probably not being very good, a lot less decks are going to be able to make Excel start a Synchro Dragon, now it'll actually just be decks that are actually able to Synchro Summon using their own regular lines of play. With Excel Stardust Synchro Dragon expected to see a lot less play this upcoming format, the price of Excel has dropped pretty significantly. This card went from being $20 on release to being a solid $55 to $60 before now falling down to around the $40 to $45 range. Honestly, with the card being so much less splashable now, I don't know if the card is going to be able to retain its value. Obviously decks like Sword Soul, Gold Pride Punk, or Mana Diem, they're still going to be able to run it, but obviously things like Labyrinth or Runic would not be running the card at all. Even then, I feel like those decks have already established lines of play, where going into Excel Stardust isn't really necessary, so I could definitely see the card falling out of favor very quickly. All of that being said, I don't think that now is the time to buy this card even after this most recent price drop. Keep an eye on the card for now over the next little while, but I could definitely see the card dropping to around $30-35 to $35 within a few months, given the significant drop in play that it will likely see. Alright guys, that is it for today's episode. 
I know we're gonna have to wait a little bit more for some new format deck lists. This list isn't effective until June 5th, so events this weekend will still be played under the old format. But I'm sure that a lot of you guys will be excited to try out lists, or you'll see something online that's gonna be under the new format. We should be able to see some really exciting stuff, and I'm really excited to see how the game is going to change and what new strategies people are looking to adopt. Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy today's Market Watch, please make sure that you let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. Also, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about the cards we talked about today and what other cards are trending in the current market. Also, if you haven't already, do make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.